Hello and welcome to Green Shift Business Lines Clean Tech Video Series. I am M Ramesh. On December 19, 2023, the Government of India, Ministry of Power, came out with amendments for the Carbon Credits Trading Scheme. It had initially announced on 28th June 2023. These amendments bring in two significant changes. And in this video, we will take a close look at one of them. The other one we will see in a subsequent video. Please do watch. Suppose both of us, you and I, have MBA in finance degrees. We go to the job market, go for an interview. But your MBA has been awarded by IIM Ahmedabad. Whereas mine is from some less known university in a small town in, in the boondocks. Now, whose MBA do you think will have more value? Obviously yours. In the same way, the market value of carbon credits also depends upon two things. One, who the issuer is. It is the equivalent of an institution like IIM Ahmedabad or another university. And what is the underlying project for carbon dioxide emission reductions or removals the credit has been issued for. These two factors determine the value of carbon credit in the market. So sometimes people say, what is the value of carbon credit in the market today? It is impossible to tell because it depends upon so many things. It depends upon who issued the carbon credit, for which project was it issued? Was it for a nature project? Was it for growing bamboo? Was it for carbon capture and sequestration project? Was it for renewable energy? And where is it being sold? The value of carbon credit could vary widely depending upon all these factors. But the crucial thing here is on what standards has the carbon credit been issued. There are a number of established carbon credits issuers, gold standard, VERA, American Carbon Registry, there are quite a few of them. And the value of the carbon credit depends a lot upon who's issued this carbon credit certificate. Carbon credit, as you know, is a financial instrument, which is a market tradable certificate given for a particular activity that may have the effect of either reducing greenhouse gas emission or removal of greenhouse gas from the atmosphere. These instruments are tradable in the markets. The generator of these instruments sells it to those people who are in a way obligated to buy or who have committed to themselves to net zero and therefore they buy these instruments. Today, if an Indian company wants to get carbon credits, it has to go to one of these issuers abroad and get themselves issued these credits. This costs both money and time. So what the government of India has now done is to have asked the Bureau of Energy Efficiency, which had earlier been named the administrator for India's carbon credit trading scheme, to come out with India's own standards for carbon credits. Now, this is a very significant measure because for the first time, India will have its own homegrown Atmanirbhar carbon credit standards. An Indian company would no longer have to go abroad, spend maybe $30,000, $40,000 to get a credit. Equally, it is possible for overseas companies to come to India, get carbon credits issued by Indian standards. Therefore, this is quite a significant step that the government has taken. Of course, this is going to take some time, but eventually the BEE will come out with its India's own carbon credits standards, which will suit Indian companies' needs. The December 19 amendments brought out by the Ministry of Power says to develop the standards and register the project under different offset mechanism. India is one of the largest suppliers of carbon credits in the international voluntary carbon markets. At present, majorly it uses standards like VCS, GS, GCC, etc. This progressive move raises many questions such as, is the Indian government standard looking to compete with global voluntary standards like VCS and GS? How this standard will attain acceptability of international buyers? Manish Dapkara, the chairman and managing director of EKI Energy Services, which is a company that helps other companies earn and trade carbon credits. And now India is therefore competing with established standards in the world with its own standards. How will this pan out? We don't know. It is like India setting up an institution for a new MBA program. 
the value of this MBA program, I'm speaking figuratively here, depends upon how the world sees it. As I said earlier, the December 19 amendments brings in two major changes. The other is to allow non-obligated entities, that is entities that are under no legal mandate, no legal obligation to reduce carbon dioxide or greenhouse gas emissions. These amendments allow these non-obligated entities also to generate carbon credits. Earlier, they could only purchase carbon credits. Now they can also generate carbon credits. By doing this, the government of India is really bringing in a what is called a carbon offset market, which is a significant step, but more about this in another video. But the big message for this time is that India is soon to have its own standards for carbon credits. Thank you.